Welcome in to the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We are nine days away from the NHL draft, and we are going to get you ready on today's show with a bunch of draft profiles. We're going to do the same thing tomorrow. And before I forget to tell everybody, Wednesday, 2 p.m., we will be talking to new Blackhawks analyst Darren Pang. So set yourself a reminder for that one. That's Wednesday at 2, but the next two days is going to be nothing but red-hot draft profiles. Before we get started, make sure you smash that like button on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you are following or subscribed to the podcast on your preferred podcast app. And a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify would mean the world to us. We would greatly, greatly appreciate that. So the way we're going to do this is kind of rapid fire. we got a lot of names to get through. In two days, we're going to go through some of the uh, probably about 20 names or so, give or take. We did 19. 19. Uh, these are all, in case you want to read more on all these players, yes. they are all up at allchgo.com. Uh, they're not all up yet, but by the end of the week, they were doing one a day over yes. there. So, And you don't have to be a diehard to uh, read those, but we'd appreciate it if you become one while yes. you're there. And more on the perks on why coming up later. That's a tease. That's that a is teaser. a tease. That's, That's a how tease. you do it. All right, let's get started. This is a guy that a lot of people have an eye on for the Blackhawks. Gabe Perot of the USND TDP. I can never get that right. Uh, headed to Boston College. He's a left winger. He is 5'11", 165. Number seven in Scott Wheeler's rankings for the Athletic. Number 11 for Chris Powers. For Chris Peters. My God. Uh, number 10 overall uh, from NHL Central Scouting's North American players. And elite prospects has Gabe Perot ranked as number 18 i've got i finally found it the hey, hockey hey, news uh draft is. preview it's a good looking cover it is uh well take it into the bathroom a lot let's put it that way you you will be the one handling that then the hockey news says the best case scenario for him is david perron that's a good player for a very very long time he is a very good skater he is a very smart player he's a very heady player uh, he is the son of Blackhawks coach and legend Yannick Perot. Uh, so there's a lot of connections being drawn right there. Uh, but he's just the kind of guy who, when you imagine this team with Connor Bedard, is kind of a perfect complementary player to a superstar. Absolutely, yeah. And, and he had the opportunity to play with two uh, high-level players, two yeah. guys that are going to go in the first round with uh, along with him on his line with Will Smith and Ryan Leonard. Uh, with the U.S. development program. And I just, you know, you look at it, you look at the points he put up this year. He set the record for the development program for for points in a a season, uh, a record that was set on different occasions by both Jack Hughes and Austin Matthews. Like, you don't break that record by, I think it was by 15 points. He broke that record. You don't do that by accident. Like, you you don't do that by just being in the third wheel uh, on your line, like Perot is able to to drive a line. He's able to uh, just just make plays that a lot of players at, at this in this draft class uh, aren't able to do. Like he's in that upper echelon of of his creativity and his playmaking ability, his hockey IQ. Um, one thing we know the Blackhawks are uh, putting a lot of value in is skating. No problems there. Uh, so I, he definitely seems like a guy who. Uh, had rocketed up the, the the draft boards in the last uh, few weeks of the season. I know his performance at the uh, U18 World Championships was a big uh, was a big uh, contributor to that. He led the tournament in points. Like it's it's an impressive uh, closeout to his draft year. And I mean, I I think there's there's a lot of uh, signs pointing to why he would fit with the Blackhawks. You obviously have the family connection currently too. Uh, the only thing is he might have rocketed too far up the draft board. You know, he might not be there at 19 like he w- would have been probably two or three months ago. Um, so if the Blackhawks need to be creative, if they really, really want to get him, uh, they're going to have to, you know, pull out their bag of tricks and pull out their assets to move up in the draft. I really don't understand that David Perone comp or like best case scenario. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, don't I think you look undersized, speedy, yeah, but uh, beneficiary of playing with better players than him. Perot's more <laughs> of a playmaker than Perron. I think. Perron was more of a scorer. Yeah, Perot. Perot's got you know, it's 
got good puck handling. Good, I don't know. I, uh, our friends over at Elite Prospects, uh, the, for their top prospect, they're doing like a shades of, and they say shades of Clayton Keller. Oh, I like that much better. That, that's a lot <laughs> I more I like that a lot better than Perron. Than David Perron. <laughs> uh, and that has nothing to do with the fact that I, I really don't like David Perron, but I just don't. <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe. I, I mean, if I'm drafting a guy that might go as high as, like, top 12, I'd, I'd want a little more than David Perron. But yeah. I mean, he's had a good long he's career. He's a good career. He's, you know, a, he's a good, a good player, player. Good, reliable player. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for someone that may go first half, first round, I want something above – good reliable player yeah i want a difference maker uh yeah if he's there at 19 if the hawks are taking 19 and he's there i think that's kind of an easy pick to make Mm -hmm. i don't think he'll be there but i don't want to even try to predict how this first round goes no no (laughs) idea after the top three after the second after fantilli goes off the board of the ducks it's wide open who knows what happened perot would be a good fit um a little on the smaller side for me but not completely undersized either it's a small draft up top, too. It like, is. Aside There's from Leo Carlson and Fantilli, a lot of the really highly skilled guys are pretty small. It seems to be the trend we're going in. I know the Hawks want to ideally add some size because a lot of their top prospects are, are on the smaller side, at least at forward. Mm. But it just might not be there early. So I, I don't get too hung up on that. There are some guys with size and skill, though, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those. But listen, if the Hawks somehow land Gabe Perot, not going to complain for a second. No, not at all. And and plus, a lot of these kids will still grow a little bit as they're still 17, 18. They can physically yeah. mature, you know, 5'11", what was he, 5'11", 160 something? 5'11", 165. He might be 6'1", 180 by the time he reaches the NHL. Yeah. So it might, might, might not be too bad uh, as far as size goes. But, yeah, I think the, the draft, the combination of size and skill, um, you're going to sacrifice a little bit. Uh, on on each things outside of guys like Leo Carlson and Adam Fantilli, um, but hey, I mean, if 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 Perot is there at 19, or if they make a move to get up because they really want to get him, I'm gonna be totally fine with it because I think he's gonna be one of those, like you said, like one of those difference making players that you want to get in the top 15 of this draft. All right, next up on our list is Michigan center winger Gavin Brindley, 5'8", 165, another little guy. Uh, the Athletic has him ranked 24th with Scott Wheeler. Chris Peters has him 25th, uh, 23rd among North American skaters by NHL Central Scouting, and number 21 by Elite Prospects. Yeah, I, I think Gavin Brindley is one of those players that, I, you know, the, the, the size problem, quote-unquote problem, uh, could be something that, that gets taken into consideration with him. Could mean, a, uh, it could be a reason that he slips to the second round, that early second round, if that's the, po- if that's the possibility. Uh, I would love for the Blackhawks to use one of those second-round picks to, to jump on him, or they trade back and get him. Uh, when we had Mike Donahue on uh, on our show, the director of amateur scouting for the Blackhawks, uh, we asked him about Gavin Brindley. He said, super fast, has the ability to play with a guy like Adam Fantilli. He can shoot and play on the inside. Pretty good player. That's a pretty quick, good synopsis uh, from Mike Donahue. Uh Fantilli himself uh, said that Gavin Brindley was his favorite teammate that he had uh, in, in a long time, if and especially in the most important year for Fantilli, his draft year, his he said his favorite teammate was Gavin Brindley. And outside of Adam Fantilli in the NCAA, the only the second highest scoring draft eligible player to play college hockey this year was Gavin Brindley. Um, so I, I I love his game. I love his ability to you know not just be oh he's five eight one sixty five he's an undersized player he's not gonna you know, he's not going to be able to, to live up to it. He's got a little bit of, De, of Alex DeBrincat in him where he's small, but he's not going to back down. He's a feisty player. He who play, plays above his size. I really like Gavin Brindley. I think he's he's a guy that fits what the Blackhawks uh, want to want in their players, the compete level, the skating. Um, it, just, it just makes sense to me. If he's there at 19 and they want to use that pick on him, great. Uh, if they feel like they can trade back or if he's available at 35, even better. Yeah, what I like about him, reading about him, is his versatility. The especially for a guy that size to be able to play kind of in any situation. Uh, you refer to him as a Swiss Army knife here in the piece, and mm-hmm. and you know, a guy who can play top six, bottom six, kind of go up and down the lineup. And as we've been talking about for the last few weeks, watching the Stanley Cup final, what gets those teams to the final is yes, it's depth, 
but it's also versatility of the roster. So if some things start to go, let's say, you know, the chemistry isn't jiving on your top line. We know this from the Quenville days. Turn on that line blender yeah. and bring a guy up to the top line who's maybe not going to be there every day, but in a pinch or to try to get things going a little bit, can fill in that role and do it. And then at the same time, hey, we're not getting enough secondary scoring. You could take a guy like that and move him down. He's going to be effective as a checker and be able to put, you know, add some scoring depth to your lineup too. So a player like that, maybe not specifically him, but I think that's, I think that's kind of where Davidson's mind needs to kind of be in general is – all right, we've got a pretty solid, like, top end, top six kind of a core already. You've already got, you know, Bedard, Reichel. You think Nazar is going to be there. You know you're going to fill with a free agent or a trade or something to solidify that top six. So now it's that bottom six that you really want to have be as strong as any bottom six in a league. Yeah. And that's when I think you start looking for these really versatile type of players like Brindley. Yeah, Brindley is the type of guy that you need to have – to win playoff series, guys that could play up and down the lineup, guys that could play different roles. He did everything at Michigan this season from killing penalties, playing on the bottom six, to not only playing with Adam Fentilli on that top line, but excelling while mm. playing with Adam. It's not like he was just there for the ride. He was driving the play. He was very effective. So he could play up and down your lineup. He could be on the power play. He could kill penalties. He's got that high energy, that motor, likes to get under the skin of players. Uh, Definitely a guy that you build that middle six around. Hockey Thirties. News says, best case, Travis Konechny. Sure. That's that's totally fine. Konechny's uh, a, another one of those undersized but very feisty players. He's uh, made a, a solid name for himself with the Flyers. I would be just fine with that. Brindley, 38 points in 41 games this year at the University of Michigan. He also tallied four points in seven games uh, with Team USA at the World Juniors. Yeah, I think, I think he's a guy that, that fits the mold of what the Blackhawks are looking for. All right, next up we've got Russian forward Daniil Boot. I like to call him Danny Butt because we're familiar that way. <laughs> he's a left winger, 6'5", 205. Size, not an issue here. Now, 205 at 6'5", that's a string bean. you got to fill that out a little bit, and he will as he gets older. Yeah. Uh, 26 ranked by Scott Wheeler of the Athletic, number 20 overall by Chris Peters. Number nine among European skaters by NHL Central Scouting and Elite Prospects says number 24. I did the, the uh, prospect profile on, on Daniel Boot. And, the butt uh, profile, if you will. Yes, I profiled the butt <laughs> uh, at, on, on the internet late at night. Or and uh, mm. um, no, I, I loved everything I saw and read about him. I want the Hawks to get some size and – this might be the biggest kid in the draft, at least at a high skill level. He's got that frame. You said six foot five, 205 pounds right now. Obviously at 18, he's going to fill out. He's going to get into an NHL program. They're going to put some muscle on him. They're going to get some strength on him. Um, it's kind of weird how he fits in this draft. Some people have him going mid first round and some people have him all the way slip into the third round. So if the Hawks like him, they got to go get him. Um, He's got raw talent. He's got a pedigree, too. His, his father uh, played seven seasons in the KHL as well. So it's not like, you know, he's, he's got it in his DNA. He's got the raw talent. He's kind of like he's going to be a project. Yeah. He's not a guy that's going to come here anytime soon. He's going to continue. He, he split last season between the KHL and the uh, MHL, which is Russia's equivalent to the AHL, and was a point-per-game player in the MHL with uh, 15 goals and 26 points in 26 games. So he's got, he's got soft hands. He could pass, set up his teammates, and has a lethal shot to finish. He, got, he has a little bit of everything, but it's that frame that's so attractive. And he yeah. skates well for a, sick, for a kid at 6'5". You know, eight, teenagers that big, they usually you know, they look like drafts out on, mm -hmm. on skates. But this kid's got that fluid motion. He's big, but he's also sneaky where he can get to soft areas of the ice and, and snipe home a goal if he needs to. So uh, one scout says he has the skill of a dynamic, undersized forward in the body of a giant. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's tantalizing there. It, it's, it's like, you know, you, you see that frame and you kind of get drawn to it and imagine, you know, what he could do with, with that kind of size. And a, and a kid that big potentially being on a line with Connor Bedard could be fun. Um, yeah. So that's a guy I would I would like the Hawks to go get. I think there's enough there, and the Hawks have nothing but time right now. So if mm -hmm. it takes three, four years before he plays here, 
that's okay. That's well, kind of how they're doing it with Sam Renzel, is you have the luxury of last year's draft, you get that extra pick. Yeah. You say, all right, we like this long-term. If he's still there, that second or third, second-round pick, grab him. Or, or take long? him. Some, well, some people or, have or if you want to, Or if you want to get creative and get, a th- get like you were just saying, get a third, first-round pick. Jump back in there in the in the 20s and 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 take a a roll of the dice on a player that's you know going to be overseas for a few more seasons, um, but that you can you know you can see the the raw talent and the raw skill is there. Um, I I would have no problems with that. Yeah, if he's available in the second round too, uh, that'd be great. I just I don't I feel like he's one of those players that I don't get the sense he's going to fall outside the first round, um, just because of the the offensive ability matched with the size like that is that is something that oh you don't see a lot like we were just saying you might compromise some size and some skill you know tip the scales one way or the other in this draft he's one of those guys that those scales are pretty close together so I, I would love for him to be a, a guy with the Blackhawks he could be you know a, a great second line scoring option down down the road and um, you know with the with the size of the top end forwards that the Blackhawks have right now, all around or under six foot, getting a guy that's six five that can that can score like that, no problems with that. I think that's yeah. a great fit. Well, speaking of size and speaking of skill, next up is Wisconsin center Charlie Stramel. You know is going to do this report. I'll it's take this. One. <laughs> six three two fifteen number thirty seven by Scott Wheeler in the Athletic, number twenty nine by Chris Peters of Flow Hockey, number thirty among North American skaters for NHL Central Scouting, and number forty seven for elite prospects. Mario, take it away on yes. your fellow Badger. Yes, uh, Charlie Stramel, he's a guy that I've been looking towards uh, for what feels like a year since the uh, last year's draft uh, was over. Uh, a, a big guy down the middle, 6'3", 215. Um, talk about you know a, a player who, as still he can physically mature, you're talking about a guy who could get to maybe 6'4", 225, playing center. Uh, in, in the NHL, like that would be just fantastic. And as we were just saying about, you know, the Blackhawks needing some skill, uh, needing some size rather, especially down the middle where you got have your your three top forward prospects are all centers, quote unquote, in Nazar, Reichel, and uh, will be Bedard. You don't have any size there. You got a lot of skill, a lot of playmaking ability, a lot of goal scoring abilities, but you don't have a guy that can play down the middle, play a 200 foot game, uh, be responsible defensively and be physical in front of the net uh, offensively and defensively and be able to go into the corners, get get the puck for his teammates, get, you know, board battle on defense. Uh, that's something that Stramel uh, is able to bring bring to the table. Uh, this is a, a quote from our friend uh, Chris Peters with Flow Hockey uh, regarding – Charlie Stramel, he says, as a massive center who can play a strong two-way game, Stramel had an underwhelming season at Wisconsin, as did everybody. Uh, this is more of an upside play based on his total body of work. Stramel has a good shot, good skating ability. His athleticism will attract teams looking to get bigger down the middle, plays a physical game, and is very difficult to knock off the puck. This season certainly ra- raised some concerns about his overall hockey sense and if the offense would get there consistently enough, but Stramel has shown enough versatility to make the case he's going to, be, he's going to find a role in the NHL. Uh, in 33 games at the University of Wisconsin this year, five goals, 12 points, uh, nothing to write home about. Did play for the uh, Team USA at the World Juniors both uh, this past winter and in the summer uh, games the, the the August weird World Juniors. He was also on that USA team, uh, but in this year's World Juniors, seven appearances, played a fourth line role, penalty killer, uh, really gritty guy, and uh, picked up three assists in that tournament. What I like about him is that, as you sort of said, he does kind of project as a center, a for sure center, because he's got the size to do it, and that's a bit of the concern with Reichel, Bedard, etc. Mm-hmm. Nazar, even I think you would say a little bit too. I like this note in the hockey news uh, who compares him to Kevin Hayes, but the note says um, one scout said that in his 30 plus years of experience, there are a few players whose stock dropped more in one season than Stramel's quote. I think he's really going to slide and that might mean a team is going to get a steal. So I think the bad Mm -hmm. year for Stramel could play right into the Hawks hands because hockey news has him at 39. They got him right around that, that, you know, that second round pick Mm -hmm. where the Hawks are going to be picking. And if, if they're looking for size up the middle, this is answer. He's local. We know the Hawks got eyes on him, and maybe they get a steal late. 
And this was a guy that... Not late, but yeah, not in the first round. This was a guy in October was getting, you know, first round consideration, getting ranked in the teens. So, yes, he did slip uh, out of a first round grade. But I think early on, the, the projections of his talent was a first round talent. And a couple guys in the chat asking, does he project as a bottom six guy as a yeah, centerman, probably, or top six? probably based on who's already here. Yeah, if he if he's your third line center, uh, I think you that would be a pretty good ceiling for him on a team that's that looking to be competitive. Yeah, I mean, you got ideally you have Bedard is technically a center. We'll see how long that lasts. Reichel, there's still some dreams that he's going to be a center. Nazar is potentially a center. So two out of those three guys will probably be centering your top line. So if he fits in third or fourth line. Ryan um, Green, Colton Dock, also centers. Yeah, so you, you got you got some flexibility there. You know, he's got the size, brings a little snarl to the bottom line. I mean, his nickname is Big Rig, so, I mean, you got to kind of like that. If it worked for Pat Maroon that, to get three cups. Exactly. It's, it's not so, bad to have a Big Rig on your team. No, you, you need to, uh, you know, you need guys like that as well. To, you need to have a, guys that can do different things, and he'll play with that physicality. But he's also, you know, pretty good passer. He showed off some skill later in the year, being able to to make some passes in tight areas. So, you know, if you put him on a line with a with a a skilled winger, he'll be able to give him the puck. And uh, you know, he plays he plays a two way game, and that's what you want out of your potential bottom six guys, guys that you can trust without the puck. All right, we've got a ton more profiles coming, but first, I want to remind everybody that the Common Energy Efficiency Program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities they serve by helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. Yep. ComEd offers a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across the territory. ComEd also offers free facility assessments that can help find energy-saving opportunities like for HVAC systems, commercial, kitchen equipment, and industrial processes. All those things we have in our homes. Tell mm-hmm. our new, several new viewers who have not smashed the like button yet yes. how that works, Greg. Once they hit the like button, I will tell them that an authorized engineer will work we with will you wait. to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person or virtually. They last about two hours. Then within about three to four weeks, you're going to receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they could start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project costs, but potential incentives and simple payback if you own a business or anything that uses electricity don't wait get started <laughs> saving money and energy today as we like to refer to monergy mm-hmm. for energy saving tips lighting incentives or to schedule your free facility assessment right after this show ends don't do it now yep. go to comed.com slash powering biz greg did you say comed.com slash powering biz b-i-z yes i did schedule it today all right with all that we'll monergy do. you're saving specifically the money part of it, uh, you can get your way down to Nashville for the draft coming up uh, next week on Wednesday. Uh, We will be getting down to Nashville and and covering the draft for CHGO uh, as best as anyone in the land is going to cover it. Uh, We will be down there Monday to Friday. Uh, We're driving down. It's going to be a nice little road trip. Uh, Tuesday, come on out to Hopsmith in Nashville and hang out with us, get excited about the draft, uh, have some drinks, have some food, uh, enjoy a nice uh, extended happy hour out in Nashville. Uh, that is a ticketed event. You can go to allchgo.com to find information on those tickets and to purchase those tickets. Uh, with that ticket, you are going to get uh, the three hours from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock at Hopsmith covered for drinks uh, and food. You get to hang out with us, uh, reminisce about the past season and – kind of share some war stories about watching the team yeah. uh, and then be able to enjoy uh, the uh, upcoming first overall pick and all the other picks coming uh, in Nashville. And included in that ticket, you will be one of the first to own the uh, exclusive CHGO first overall pick, uh, CHGO Blackhawks t-shirt design. That is going to be available in that ticket as well. And, of course, you want to become a diehard. Uh, you can do that at allchgo.com as well. 
And when you become a diehard, uh, you, not only do you get a free shirt upon signing up to be a diehard and a free shirt every year that you renew, uh, you also get 20% off all of our merchandise and all of our events. Uh, you can go to CHGO Locker to check out all the great shirts and mer- merchandise that we have. We have a lot of events going on. Uh, obviously, the road trip to Nashville is, is, is the big one coming up for us. During football season, we got our tailgates. Oh, yeah. uh, during basketball season, we got you know takeovers. Hockey season, we do takeovers as well. Baseball, we got some tailgates, I'm sure. Uh, coming up this summer uh, so you're going to get uh, discounts on all those events as well and you get uh, access to some of our diehard only uh, work that we do uh, on allcco.com all of our you know articles and, and and whatnots jay you did you know during the season you had your blackhawks beat yep uh, that is for diehards only so sign up become a diehard get all the perks get all the discounts get all the access and get all the fun easy enough all right, next up on our list of draft prospects from the Sudbury Wolves, Quentin Musty, left winger, 6'2", 200 pounds. Scott Wheeler has him number 18. Chris Peters, number 32. He is 14th among North American skaters, and Elite Prospects has him at number 12. Yeah, this was a kid I admittedly didn't know a whole lot about before we started doing our prof- profiles, but as I dove in uh, – to the Quentin Musty file, I immediately was like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's get this kid. Um, (laughs) One of the scouts has said that um, he is probably the best offensive player from the OHL in this year's draft class. Uh, His season really took off. He had 78 points in 53 games, but his season took off uh, when the Sudbury Wolves made a coaching change and put Derek McKenzie uh, behind the bench. Uh, that's where he went in for 22 goals and 68 points in his last 42 games after the coaching Damn. change. Uh, he's got a great shot. Uh, he's got a great wrist shot to go with a snapshot. It's heavy. It's accurate. He also has very good playmaking skills as well. Uh, he's got size. He's got aggression along the boards. He goes in front of the net. He loves hitting people off the puck. He's very hard to get off the puck himself with his big frame. Um, you know, he's the type of player that can, can, is hard to play against. You're going to remember playing against him, and he's the, the time that he can wear down opponents throughout the course of a game, and hopefully eventually the course of a seven-game playoff series. He's the kind of guy that's going to wear down your opponent and make a difference. His skating is a little yeah. below average, but you could probably say that about 90% of teenagers. A lot of, a lot like, of these guys, yeah. They're not, those are things that are like – coachable and fixable was it was it Vlasic who said he grew really fast really quickly and had kind of had like relearn how to skate yeah. mm-hmm. that's a lot of these guys yeah. they go through these growth spurts and they're like wait a minute how yeah. do my legs work again? they finish yeah. their u15 season at five seven <laughs> they come out for their u16 <laughs> season and they're six two yeah and they don't remember you know mm-hmm. they got to figure it out right skating can be fixed like you can work on speed you can work on mechanics you can work on strides these kids are, are 18 years old especially in the in the junior level um, you know, in the in the CHL teams, there's not a lot of practice time for those guys. Yeah, They're playing so a lot many of games. games. Right. Whereas the college kids can become better skaters quicker because. They're practicing five days a week and playing two days a week, as opposed to playing four days a week and maybe having one f- like real full practice. Yeah. Um, so I the skating on Musty doesn't worry me that much. I know Mike Donny told us if, if you can't skate, you can't play for the Blackhawks. But I think. With him, the size, the shot, the playmaking ability, the aggressiveness, you take time to develop that skating better. And even if he doesn't become a world-class elite skater, all his other skill sets will offset for that. And we do know the Blackhawks at least took some time to talk with him at the draft combine because he was featured in that video that they uh, released right yeah. after the combine. So Quentin Musty was, uh, was, was talking with the Blackhawks brass. Uh, you talk about players that look the part of a hockey player. Yeah. Uh, very, very much in the same, uh, <laughs> same it's cut from the same cloth as a guy like Ryder Rolston. Like, you just look at him, you're like, that guy plays hockey for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, yeah I, 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 I like Quentin Musty as, as an option there. I think he's one of those guys that is going to be there uh, in, in the late teens, early 20s. Um, if, they, if they think that his body of work can uh, overcome the kind of deficiencies with his skating, 
that might be a, that might be the play of of getting into the first round again or trading back. Like it could could be uh, available to the Blackhawks. There. One scout had concerns about his consistency. He says, "quote When he's on, he can be the best draft eligible player eligible player in the OHL. His issue has been consistency. Maybe it's because he's on a weaker team, but it's all about the consistency in his play. So when he's playing great, he's great." But uh, it's closing the gap between those good and not-so-good games. Mm -hmm. And hopefully uh, NHL development staff can get that out of them. And look, as all these guys mature and they get more focused, and especially you get that NHL team that you're part of looking over you, those things can can improve quickly. Yeah, they they get the video coaches working with you. You get... Each team has guys that is essentially just there. You know, get Kendall Coyne Schofield working on skating. You know, that'll yeah, be all right. that'll work. Yeah. 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 Uh, the uh, Shades of Quentin Musty in the uh, Elite Prospects amazing draft guide is Shades of Pavel Buchnevich. Same for Hockey News, same player. Uh, all right. There nice. you go. So, yeah. That I'll would t- work. I'll That's take a quality a player. Buchnevich on a team with Connor Bedard and Lucas Reichel. <laughs> yeah. That'll do. That'll, that'll, that'll do for sure. All right. Next up, we have. From the Kelowna Rockets of the Western Hockey League, Andrew Crystal or Crystal. We haven't really determined what's the right pronunciation. When we talk to uh, Cam Robinson on Thursday, which, by the way, Cam Robinson of the Elite Prospects will be joining us on Thursday, we will get the Crystal Crystal debate yeah. finalized. I think if you're in a 90s hip hop song, you have to call him Crystal. I think so, <laughs> yeah. He is a left winger, 5'10, 170, uh, 13th ranked by the athletic Scott Wheeler. 24th by Chris Peters of Flow Hockey. He is 15th among uh, NHL Central Scouting North American skaters and 19th overall uh, by Elite Prospects. He is good friends with Connor Bedard, and that is something to keep in mind. They're close. They've played together for a long time. He put up massive, massive numbers, 95 points in 54 games. He's a good stick handler. He can pass. He can shoot. He's got great hockey sense, but... Like a lot of these young players, skating is a concern. We know how very interested the Blackhawks are and, and emphatic they are about being able to skate. Um, I saw a lot of comparisons, though, uh, in like the kind of the scouting profiles of he's got a good ability to find that area of the ice where the puck finds him, mm-hmm. a lot like we saw from Artemi Panarin and Alex Dabrinkit here, where they did, and Alex Ovechkin probably better than anyone in history of finding that place where the puck's going to go and taking advantage of scoring from that yeah. spot. Uh, that's Andrew Crystal. Crystal's game. Big time scorer. Friends with Connor Bedard. If he had that skating, that would check all three boxes for the Hawks. I know that they're interested. They've been actively scouting him for months and months and months. And whether or not they're concerned about the skating or not remains to be seen. He's also kind of a polarizing prospect too. There's a lot. I know he, he's pretty close in the rankings that we featured, mm-hmm. but some love him. Some really don't like them really you know down. you kind of can fluctuate from you know like 12 13 to like bottom of the first round early second round in some projections so yeah it all depends on who you read but uh hey man 95 points in 54 games that sounds fun yeah i i, I think you know a lot with a lot like uh perot like you don't just you know fall ass backwards into points like that you know especially on uh, teams like like Kelowna in the WHL, where you know they they were one of those, they were a playoff team in the WHL, but they were you know one of those lower seeds. So uh, Crystal was was definitely driving that team uh, most of the season. So look, I, I I think the production speaks for itself. I think his you know you talk about the the conditions with his skating, ho- hockey IQ, vision, and and like Ju like like you were saying, knowing where knowing how to read a play and know where to be rather than having to just rely on your skating to put yourself in that position, you know, knowing the, you know, knowing where the puck's going to go, reading a play, I think can, can really make up for some of those deficiencies. You can do that at the junior level. You can do that when you're young, doing it at the NHL level is a whole different thing. I like Andrew Crystal's game. I just don't know if a, it fits what the Blackhawks are looking for or B, if he's going to be there with one of their picks. Cause if a team really, 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 really likes him, he might go before 19, or he might fall after 19 but before 35. Like I, I, and I don't know if he's necessarily the player that, if he falls to the Blackhawks, maybe in, in that middle of the second round, maybe they say, you know what, best player on the on the board right now, I think we have to take him. But I don't see, it just doesn't feel like he's the kind of player that they're gonna like go out of their way to trade down for or trade up for. So. 
I don't know. I, I have I have no concerns that he'll be a productive player. I just don't know if he's going to fit with the Blackhawks and what they're trying to do. I'm a little weary on on Cristal. I, I I I some quotes here from the um, anonymous scouts uh, in the elite prospect uh, are these are the guys who get paid to watch hockey players and, and evaluate them. Here's one from a Western Conference scout in May of 2023. If he's going to play, he's going to have to take a long road to get there. Like he's going to have to spend some time in the American League because his skating and size ratio doesn't add up. There's no backup game. He's a good junior pro player, but I don't know how it translates to being a good pro. And another Eastern Conference scout in January said, if there's a worse skater in this draft, I haven't seen him. You add the fact that he looks every bit of five foot eight out there, and I can see him sliding a long way down on draft day. There Next, are Rocco Grimaldi, perhaps. Perpetual perhaps. small king in the AHL. Perhaps. Maybe. I mean, I'm not going crazy for him. I'm not taking. I'm not using a first round pick on him. I think there's a lot better talent and as Mario said fits what the Blackhawks are looking to do if he's there with that last pick of the second round you still got and he's still there okay 55 something I think? maybe if yeah. he's down there or maybe one of those 40 pick you know one of those second round picks maybe you know you go okay best player on the board let's take let's roll the dice here but you know I I just everybody says oh he's Bedard's good buddy you gotta have him no you don't you, you don't. <laughs> well, He'll, it's one Bedard thing, will make new friends when he gets here. It's yeah. one thing to say the skating needs work. It's another to say he is the worst well, skater, skater in the draft. In a draft. Right. Like, like we've been yeah. saying, like, you two, can work on two different yeah. You can develop a yeah. better stride and make a more efficient skater, of course. But when you're talking about a guy that flat out can't skate. At a professional level. And when the Hawks yeah. say, if you can't skate, you can't Donnie be a Blackhawk. That, that's the first name that popped in my head going, yeah, he's off the board. Yeah. 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 And a couple people in, in the chat uh, bringing up Dylan Strom. Look, even Dylan Strom, for a, as bad of a rap as his skating got, it's average for the NHL. Yeah. If Cristal can't get to the the average NHL skate skating ability, then you really have a problem. And Dylan Strom is big. Yeah, he's, he's not big, five eight. He's a big frame. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, skating is not a concern for our next profile. No, this is a guy who a lot of our uh, viewers and listeners have had an eye on for a long time. Oliver Moore of the US NTDP. Mm. Nice. Headed to University of Minnesota next season. He's a 5'11", 180 center. Number nine by Scott Wheeler. 12 by Chris Peters. Uh, eight overall by uh, NHL Central Scouting of North American Skaters. And eighth for elite prospects. So if you want Oliver Moore, you're going to have to trade yep. up to get him. Mm -hmm. Here is a uh, Here's from the Elite Prospects Draft Guide. Quote, we've never sc scouted a faster, more agile skater than Oliver Moore in our time covering the draft in an editorial capacity at Elite Prospects, full stop. The way he outraces opponents to lose pucks, explodes past them in space, and covers ground on the back check, it would strain credibility to describe it in text. You almost have to see it for yourself to believe it. But oh. not only is he a great skater, he is an all-around player. He is a checker. He is a defender. He plays throughout the entirety of the ice. If they can get Oliver Moore... I say go for it. If you can trade up and get there, you're gonna have to get up. I don't know. I don't even know if eleven's gonna be good enough. Yeah, you're. You might need to if, if they. Uh, Oliver Moore fits what we talk about. Fit with the Blackhawks. He fits exactly what the Blackhawks need. Yes. Um. And and want to get. If they really love him, they're gonna have to give up some something considerable to get up to, towards or into the top. Well, 10. they've got it. They've got They've it to got give up potential. And to as do I, it. I wrote about this in the profile too. And as you imagine what this Hawks team is going to look like, and when it's time to compete again, and what they looked like when they were winning cups, where all the offense was generated off the the breakout, mm -hmm. right? You had puck moving defensemen that could get the puck to sort of forward, and you got someone like Kevin Korchinski back there leading your defensive core, getting the puck to Connor Bedard and Oliver Moore at full speed. You know, at center ice in the neutral zone. That's going to be really tough to stop mm -hmm. because as great as the Hawks were in the dynasty, they didn't have a lot of speed burners. Patrick Kane was never known for his speed. It was his hands and his intelligence. Jonathan Taze, for his hard work, hosted the same, mm -hmm. right? Patrick Sharp had speed, but not elite scoring. You talk about somebody like Moore added that to that sort of an offense. Yeah. I mean, now you're cooking, but it's going to take a lot to get him. Yeah. But if the Hawks say, this is our guy, 
they have the pieces to trade up and get them. They, they do. They can make they it do. happen. They can make it happen. Uh, here is uh, Elite Prospects, Shades of Dylan Larkin. Okay. Speed. And I'm going to read you the first line, or first two sentences of his draft pro, pro, uh, profile from Elite, profi- uh, Elite Prospects. Their scouting report starts like this. We've never scouted a faster, more agile <laughs> skater than Oliver Moore in our time covering the draft in an editorial capacity at Elite Prospects. Full stop. Yep, that's good. That's, like that. that's a pretty that's good uh, endorsement. That's right fast. There. Yeah, yeah, that's a fast. Skater. Absolutely. I, I think uh, if he's if he's slipping somehow, uh, that's that's best case scenario. I don't see how? it happening. Yeah, I, I can't I see, see how he's going to fall. And it's yeah, I mean, and and he's going to be a guy that is probably like I know Nazar missed the uh, majority of his freshman year because of injury, but I think the pro the, the process for him was going to be probably two years at Michigan anyways. Right. This will probably be the same for a guy like Oliver Moore, two years of college and then potentially make the jump to the to the NHL. And going to Minnesota, as much as I hate, it pains me to say it, is one of the best programs <laughs> in college hockey to, to, to go to. So uh, I, I know um, Sam Renzel is also going to Minnesota, so that would be a cool connection to see those two there Get to play uh, with potentially the, as well. Logan Cooley. Logan staying. Cooley will be there. Who's staying? Yeah, I mean that's a good team. That's a team that finished number one uh, in in the nation this year, even though they didn't win the national championship. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, they're they're a great problem or a great uh, program to go to. So Oliver Moore would be a wonderful fit. All right, we've got three more to go here. Next up is Swedish forward Otto Stenberg. He is a center winger, 5'11", 180, number twenty nine from Scott Wheeler, number twenty two from Chris Peters. Sixth amongst European skaters from NHL Central Scouting, and Elite Prospects has him at number 36. Yeah, I, I like Otto Stenberg. Uh, there's there's a lot of hot and cold with him in his game, but I, I think that's something that as players grow and mature uh, and then start playing at higher levels, um, that's something that can can obviously grow with them. Uh, Stenberg was playing with Frölunda of the uh, SHL this season. 23 games in the, in the uh, Swedish professional leagues. Uh, one goal, three points in those games. But in the uh, under-20 Swedish league with Frölunda, uh, 29 games, 11 goals, 26 points. So among his peers, uh, he was one of the best in that Swedish league. Uh, he also played in seven games uh, for Sweden at the U18 World Championships. Uh, he was captain of that Swedish team. Seven goals and 16 points uh, in that tournament for Sweden. So that's nothing. Uh, that's not anything to, uh, to turn your nose up at. So uh, Stenberg's going to be staying in Sweden. So this is another guy that's going to take some time. Uh, but I really like his game. I think he he brings a lot of uh, skill, good shot, good creativity. And one of his best assets is uh, just the compete level, the high motor in his game. Um, but it's hard. The thing with Stenberg is that it's hard to do night in, night out. So it's consistency that that is kind of keeping him as a lower first round, potentially slipping to the second round uh, selection. This coming from Corey Pronman of The Athletic says there's a lot to like about Stenberg's game. He's a strong skater with good hands who can be a threat in transition. His shot is excellent, and Stenberg is often a threat to score from the faceoff dots. That face-off dots, although I don't know if that will be his role on an NHL power play. Stenberg isn't the biggest forward, but he gives an honest effort every night and doesn't shy from going into traffic. His hockey sense is good enough to score at, a, at higher levels, but he's certainly more of a score shooter than a passer. What I like reading about him, uh, the Hockey News points it out too, they have him uh, compared to Philip Heedle as a comparison. A player who raises his game when the stakes are highest. Yeah. And that is, you know, you, there are players that do the opposite of that, that when the spotlight's on them, they completely crumble. I think that's why if there was any question about Connor Bedard versus Adam Fantilli earlier in the year, his performance at World Juniors squashed that because he was just awesome. Mm-hmm. He took expectations that were sky high and absolutely shattered them with his performance. Um, and and, th- and this player does the same. You know, Stenberg does the same on, on the biggest stage. So probably another bit of a project, you know, but I – I'm just a big fan of Swedes. I just like the way they coach the game there. Don't yeah, you like you fin- know, Finns. Oh, I, the Finns are my favorite. Don't get me you wrong. I don't think you can like both. I, I yeah. I well, like, I think it's you're like, a fan of the Nordic hockey. Hockey. Well, right. I think what I but I'm saying like I like the way that the Swedes develop players. Yeah. You know, it's all very like every everyone's kind of coached the same way, so you can kind of predict a little bit 
when a player comes from Sweden, they're going to be a little more NHL ready than maybe from other European countries, just because of the way the game is coached there. Um, I'm interested. I again, kind of seems a little like for for what the total package might be. Twenty nine, like that second first round pick, still might be a little early for me, considering how deep this is and how dynamic this draft is. But I trust this. I very much trust the staff. Yeah, that they have done their due diligence on scouting. I wouldn't be disappointed, but I think if I was to to choose someone in that spot, it would probably be someone other than him. Yeah, he feels like a guy that either they they if they really like in that range and feel like comfortable trading back, he's a guy that they could do that. Um, I think he'll I think he'll go in the first round. I don't think he'll I don't think he'll slip to to thirty five. If he does, wonderful for the Blackhawks to have him as an option. But I think he's a first round pick. I don't know. I don't think he's necessarily uh, a you know a lock at 19. I think if he's in he's in the 20s, late 20s, if they want to trade back or get into the first round again a third time, uh, he's he's an option there. Um, yes. Yeah, I I, I I like Senberg's game. I think he reminds me a lot of you know the the the, comp- the comparisons of of his game remind me a lot of like peak Christopher Stieg, yeah. where that like second line, third line, high energy guy who can score. Like I, I'd be okay with that. All right, we got two more to go, but first we want to tell you about our friends at FOCO.com. You want to look good on draft day, whether you're with us in Nashville, whether you're in Chicago, sitting on your couch, get fitted out in the best sports gear around at FOCO.com. Hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. It is spring and baseball season. Aloha shirts, straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need for a game. You look around our set here at CHGO. It is like 85% FOCO. Yeah. And we appreciate it. So thanks to our friends at FOCO for sending some stuff over you're going to want to get fitted out. Look good coming next Wednesday. Woo, it's soon. Oh, man. Woo. It is soon. Cannot, we've been leading up to this day since we launched this mm-hmm. damn station. Yep. Cannot wait. Get decked out in some Sweet Hawks gear from FOCO. Check out FOCO.com or click the link in our description below. For all non-presale items, use promo code CHGO for 10% off at FOCO.com. And the perfect accessory to go with your awesome FOCO gear are some super sweet-looking sunglasses. And for that... You go to our buddies at Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather with their premium Polaroid shades that come at a very affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that is just as good. I say even better than any expensive pair I've ever worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Did you leave them at a truck stop? On the way to Nashville, you left them in the men's room. It's been known to happen. doesn't matter. (laughs) They're going to send you a brand new pair. You can wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Plus, together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much-needed support to nonprofit partners across the United States through Shady Rays Impact. From building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime, Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others like it now for you like it like it now and for years to come so excited i'm stumbling over the lines so feel good while you look good if you don't love your shady rays you can exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days you won't want to but it's there just in case there's a there is zero risk when you shop they always have your back and exclusively for our listeners shady rays is giving out their best deal of the season go to shadyrays.com use the promo code chgo for check at checkout and you're going to get 50 percent off two or more pairs of polaroid sunglasses the more you buy the more you save try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250 thousand folks next up is he a five-star prospect let's find out brandon wheat king's captain nate danielson he is a center but can play all forward positions 6 185 string bean 20th overall by Scott Wheeler, 13th by Chris Peters, 7th among North American skaters by NHL Central Scouting, and Elite Prospects has him at number 26. He's a guy that a lot of a lot of people uh, want the Blackhawks to take at, at, at number 19. He's a guy I think will be exactly right there, and he's one of those players that 
you know, we talk about the scales of size and skill, they're pretty even. Like he's got pretty good size. He can he can add a couple uh, you know, Italian beefs to his to his frame. We got him on that. But he's he's got the size down the middle that the that the Blackhawks don't. He's got some pretty good skill to him as well. Uh, two and a half seasons in, in the WHL uh, with Brandon Wheat Kings. Uh, in 2021-22, 50, uh, 23 goals, 57 points in 53 games. This past season as captain of the Brandon Wheat Kings, 33 goals, 78 points in 68 games. Um, to see a draft elg- a draft year player be named a captain of, of a junior team, like that is pretty impressive to be you know, at, at that age, in that age group. Uh, and looked at as a leader, um, the Blackhawks have a have a good track record of of selecting junior league captains. Paul Litwinski, Ethan Del Mastro, Colton Dock, Nolan Allen, all of these guys uh, have been captains of their of their junior teams before. Uh, so to see that from Dan- Danielson is is uh, an impressive step, uh, especially when you you know talk about how much the Blackhawks are emphasizing not only um, you know skill sets but also high character guys. I think Danielson checks that box. Uh, speaking of checking boxes, this is from Corey Promman of The Athletic. It says, Danielson checks every box you want in an NHL forward. He skates like an NHL player. He has great sticks, stick skills. He can set up and finish plays. He has good size, and he wins battles. The pure stats this season don't blow you away, but his teammates were lacking in quality. From a pure pro projection and in thinking about what he could be, he has all the tools and has shown a history of scoring when playing with better players if he hits you could get a star uh, this is from steven ellis of the daily Faceoff. says daniel danielson feels like a safe pick i'm not sure he's more than a 45 50 point guy in the nhl but he's consistent and valuable enough at both ends of the ice that he'll have a solid young career you won't find a ton of 18 year old captains either so little 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 mixture there from the from the scouting department but i think you know what what Promen says, it seems like Danielson checks every box that you want. Yeah, he's a bit of an older prospect. List, missed last year's draft by 12 days. So uh, <laughs> he was not eligible by 12 days. And w- kind of li- what you said here in Hockey News, a, a scout says, quote, I saw him in a game where his line mates cost him four assists. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think there are a lot of teams that are going to sleep on this guy. Uh, a little bit of question about his overall motor, if he brings it every night. But again, immaturity, growth, all those sort of things. Maybe he's annoyed that his teammates suck so bad, which is understandable. <laughs> yeah. uh, best case from Hockey News, Nazem Kadri. Okay, solid. Yes, I mean, you know, and you know who's a you know who's a coach that can get a young player's motor going? Luke Richardson. Luke yeah, he's uh, <laughs> according to uh, Scott Wheeler, he's a uh, he's a uh, pro size, hard working center. Uh, that skates and excels driving through the middle of the ice, pushing tempo and playing on energy. Sounds exactly like the type of hockey the Blackhawks want to play going forward. No so, doubt. Absolutely. Uh, we'll see if he's uh, at that 19 pick. Could be an interesting uh, move there. Also th- depends on who else is there. I think he'll be there. I think he'll be there too. And I, would I be upset with that pick? Only depending on who they didn't pick. Like you know, Yeah, who else is around. Right. If you get, you know, yeah. <laughs> some of these other guys we've talked about are there. If you get someone that slides or whatnot, yeah. 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 I also hate safe picks on draft day. And then when they become pros, you're like, I'm glad they made that pick. <laughs> that, that really worked out. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm going to hate even more safe picks knowing that you have Connor Bedard. Yeah. yeah. Like you could get a little risky yeah. when you know you've got. And, and you, have, you, have, you have six, you know, darts at the board in the first two rounds. You don't necessarily. You're not in a position where you're just like, well, we need to make this pick count because we don't. We only have another yeah. one till the fifth round or whatever. So, right. Yeah, I, I think if you want to take a swing on a guy, you can do it. But if you're in a position where, you know, you're comfortable with the guys on your board, uh, and and Danielson's one of them, I, I I don't think there's going to be any issues taking him. Um, I think he's a guy that that, you know, fits what the Blackhawks want to do. All right, last prospect of the day before we wrap it up on day one. We got through all these. It's great. Nice. Chicago Seal forward Jaden Perron, right winger, five foot nine, 165, 28th overall by Scott Wheeler, 52nd overall by Chris Peters, 43rd among North American skaters at NHL Central Scouting, and 29th from Elite Prospects. Well, as you see... He's another one of these young players that are kind of all over the board. Um, some people think he's going to be a first rounder. Some people think he'll get to the second. Uh, but if you were a fan of the Chicago Steel and you went out to Geneva a few times this year and saw him, 
he's got a good chance of being another one of these first round picks uh, that 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 they're pumping out of the steel mm-hmm. uh, recently. Uh, he's he's a very great puck handler, and, and it, that helped his game a lot. Uh, Nick Richard of, uh, or maybe it's Richard, depending on what part of Canada he's from, from Dauber Prospects, says, apart from Connor Bedard, Jane Perrone may be the best off-puck offensive mover in the draft class. Damn. He has an unparalleled knack for finding space in the slot and timing those decisive routes to fall behind coverage forms, the crux of his offensive upside, and he and think he thinks the game at a high level to indicate the transibility of this habit. That's scout talk if I've ever heard it. Uh, basically, he's good at finding soft spots in the ice nice. to score. Uh, he's got a high hockey IQ cre- when he's working with some hopefully very highly skilled player players. Uh, if he gets to Chicago, um, you know he's he's great offensive player, but he's also no slouch uh, defensively either. You know he's not going to win any selkies, but he tracks the puck well, does a good job of back checking. He does. He does not shy away from his defensive uh, responsibilities. I think his ceiling's pretty high. He could project to be a top six forward. Otherwise, he's another one of those guys that, you know, third line productive third line players. How many we said we've said it a million times. Those Stanley Cup winning teams. You gotta have guys, you know, on the bottom six that can produce. He is going to play for the University of North Dakota yeah, next season. That. So another program. top program to go to where he's going to develop and get bigger and stronger and work on his weaknesses. These kids that go play for these top programs, it's huge. Yeah, any um, sort of weakness in his game is going to be identified and eliminated by the people in North mm-hmm. Dakota. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think one of his best attributes is that he is uh, no relation to David Perron. <laughs> that too confirmed. So that is a so that is a good thing. Yeah, I, he's one of those interesting guys. I did a uh, I did a a mock draft uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was available in the fourth round. And again, this is just going by the computers, but I was just like surprised to see yeah. him there. I was just like, wow. I mean, that, not 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 to take that for too much, you know, for what it's worth. But it was just interesting that you know how those how. how those sites, you know, put their put their formulas together. He wasn't one of those those uh, earlier picks. So I mean, he could be a guy that slips. You know, we're talking maybe in one of those second round picks, maybe a third round pick if he's still available. Um, that could be quite the steal for the Blackhawks if he's in that range. Best case from Hockey News is Connor Garland. Hey. Sure. You hey, you could, could get trade Jane, for you could trade both. for Connor Garland yeah, and then have the Jaden Perron or get the potential <laughs> Connor Garland with just a draft pick. There you go. If he's there in the third round. You Go for it. Grab. Who yeah. better to teach him to be Connor Garland than Connor Garland himself? Exactly. <laughs> Let's make it happen. The okay. universe. Let's put it out there. All right. That was a lot of fun. We're going to be back at it tomorrow with a new crop of prospects. Uh, I see a lot of chatter about uh, Matvey Mitchkov. He will not be on our list because there's virtually no chance the Hawks pick him. Um, Almost virtually no chance, I would say. Yeah, yeah but if they... Because it, it's... it's Man, it's really weird how much imagine, though? people, oh, God, people in the that. community are saying he's that. slipping. Like... Uh, it's 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 wild. No way he gets past the caps. He doesn't get past the caps. I can't imagine. I, don't I, I think the Coyotes take him at six if he's there. I, Maybe. I, I they got 12 to back up. Right. Yeah. Maybe. So he, debut your new arena in whatever he will, city or he state. Was, he wasn't at the Combine, but he will be in Nashville for the draft. So uh, from what I saw, uh, this was from uh, Bob McKenzie. He said that teams are going to be interviewing him prior to the draft uh so it's it's a quick turnaround but to be able to get some face-to-face time with him i think is what teams were uh missing in their evaluation of him so that'll be important for them i i can't imagine he slips beyond eight i don't see no it way. happening no. i don't no see way. it happening um if there's some weird dream scenario where the blackhawks can trade up and take him and bedard i that would be just amazing oh yeah. i would love that i just don't see that actually happening it'd be fun All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow with two with our next crop of prospects. Make sure that is a crop. Make sure you smash that like button on your way out. That's a joke for a few people. Huge week, though. Yeah, remember, Wednesday, 2 o'clock, Darren Pang. Thursday, 2 o'clock, Cam Robinson. Him of the uh, head, the, uh, the, the, what do you call it? Bandana. Him and Brett Michaels with the permanently installed uh, bandana. Love it. I love Cam Robinson. If you want to feel excited about prospects, that's the dude to listen to. That's why we're going to have him on. Yep, can't wait. Huge week. So we'll talk to you Tuesday at 2 o'clock with more prospects on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.